Hello, I'm Stacey Ann, Reliable News Talk Radio, KSLM. News that you can use on this Thursday and every day. And the topic this morning is our homelessness and solutions. From the capital city of the state of Oregon, it's Good Morning Salem with Stacey Ann. I'm excited to partner up with Lisa Andrews and have her here in the studio with us this morning to talk about Changing the World Incorporated, empowering people, their mission and their organization, and why this issue right now. Good morning, Stacy. We from Changing the World, Inc. are so excited to be here. This actually started with at-risk youth, Mm -hmm. and we started out just handing out hygiene packs and hand warmers when it was super cold. And what is your website? Our website is changingtheworldinc.org. Okay, and so you're a nonprofit organization, right? Yes, we're a nonprofit 501c3, mm-hmm. and we've been a nonprofit since 2012. Mm-hmm. And you've had projects previous to this project all yes. over the, the world, right? You've worked yes. on other things. Yes. We have a d- director of operations on the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, and overseas. Excellent. Well, as we continue on the conversation, I'm excited to to uh, share a little bit more about how you and I can get engaged in this process, friends. There's there's something we can do. And it's so good to have Lisa in the studio, and also I want to introduce Todd Gessley. Welcome to the show this morning, and talk to us a little bit about your role in this organization and how you see we can address the problem with some real-life practical solutions. Well, I got involved as chairman of the board for uh, changingtheworldinc.org because I'm an international photographer and with COVID, I can't do anything international. And most of my work has been in refugee camps and eye clinics and doing faith-based promotion and grant writing and stuff internationally for NGOs. Mm -hmm. And when I heard about changing the world and met Lisa, I said, wow, I... What Lisa's talking about is doing something that's a little different. We've got this huge campus we've got our eye on. It's a solution for the homeless, Changing the World, Inc. Our vision is to purchase a campus and actually have a school for the homeless. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, the Oregon State Legislature has Project Turnkey. That's a grant of $65 million that they're giving away by June. So I got involved as a grant writer, wrote a grant so we can purchase the campus and operate it. And the the residents, the homeless that that come to us would become students and teachers Mm. uh, because they have skills. So it gives them dignity. There's a huge dormitory. There's classrooms. It's it's a 55, you know, plus acre campus. Oh, incredible. And so we're just praying. We're one of 20 groups, uh, applications for this grant. Oh, so yay. You know, so, so I think the Oregon legislature is really doing a great job with their mm-hmm. vision and putting some money aside for this. You know, they've awarded, I think, three already, and it's a process because okay. you have to go through and inspect and make sure, sure everything's there. But it's for hotels. Mm-hmm. You know, they're shut down with COVID mm-hmm. that they'll open them up for the homeless right. or for, for schools or those. They're just looking for a place to, where they can put them and and what we think is we think we have an edge because yes. we changing the world inc.org is is out there and today we want to engage you guys mm-hmm. here in the community and say hey if you've got ideas or if you're a teacher or if you've got a passion or you know we're going to need a school bus it's in a rural area it's mm-hmm. about within 25 miles of downtown portland and so you know we're going to need to bus people back and forth every day. So maybe there's a community church that has a bus they don't use during the week. They mm-hmm. could come out and once we get the grant and open up the campus, you know, we're going to need drivers and people to take people mm-hmm. back and forth. We're going to need people to come in from the community and cook a cook, come and cook a meal. We got a full-blown cafeteria just sitting there with all the goodies. I love it. You know, so it's it's going to be a turnkey thing. We're going to have a lot of remodeling and those kinds of things, but you know, right now, if if God works and we get the grant from Project Turnkey and the Oregon Community Foundation, who's administrating the grant, mm. you know, this will be a real, real neat thing for Oregonians. How many? What's the capacity? Have you even looked at that? Of how many individuals or families you could serve? Well, it's going to start out with about 200. Wow. But as we move along, we can house probably within a year or two, 500. Incredible. And so that's one of the things that uh, the grant is looking to house between 800 and 1,000 people. Mm -hmm. 
And, Fantastic. and so I feel like we really have an edge with that. And that's not the only grant that we're applying for. There's a number of grants. We have a passionate vision and we're determined to see this through. The neat thing that you have is uh, what I see, Todd and Lisa, is that you have history. You're not a brand new organization uh, putting it together Correct. to get this money. You have a history of uh, impacting lives, not only locally, but internationally, to show yes. that you have experience and you have a team of individuals who already know what you're doing and you have your game plan organized. And as a, as a, a grant writer myself and working in nonprofit that, and, and I've evaluated grant applications before, to me, that sounds like a win-win all, all the way around. And uh, this isn't per se a faith-based organization. This is a community, a charitable organization and yes. faith is an element of that of course but uh, that opens up doors also to receive a lot of these government grants and, and support correct yes that's correct yep so tell me a little bit lisa about uh i talked a little earlier about you know we tend to think of homelessness in a certain way or put people in a box who are homeless there are real families out there right now on the streets that have been impacted for a variety of reasons. Talk to me, tell me a story of a family that you've encountered. Well, when we were ha passing out hand warmers um, this last winter, the night before it had been 28 degrees. Mm. And so Lowe's had donated us um, a thousand ha hand warmers. And so we were handing them out. And there's this one family in a tent by the Market Street Bridge, and they had three small children shivering in blankets, and they just didn't seem like your normal, what you'd envision a normal homeless person. And so I, I asked the woman, what happened to get you here? And she's kind of shaking and tears welling up in her eyes. Well, she told me, well, you know, my husband and I both had jobs and then COVID started and we were laid off. We applied immediately for unemployment and we didn't get our check till seven or eight months later. By the time we got our check, the fires had happened. And when our place burnt down, because we had not paid rent, nobody would take us in. Mm. And so um, we ended up homeless for a little while, but then we got our checks all at once. And so we were able to stay at a hotel, but because that's very expensive, we went through our money very quickly. And now we're back homeless again. And she told me, she goes, you know, I'd love to go get a job, but I can't even get a shower. She goes, I haven't had a shower in two and a half months. Mm. There's no place to go to the bathroom, no place to have a shower. Um, she's like, I, I really want to work, but who's going to hire me when I look like this? I smell like this. Mm. I don't know what to do. So um, that's another thing is we have procured a shower truck, but we need a volunteer that has a CDL license to drive it. We have enough volunteers at this time to help run it other than the CDL um, license person. Mm -hmm. So if there's anybody out there who would like to volunteer to take a shower truck to these homeless camps, we would love to hear from you at changingtheworldinc.org. Is there a phone number too? Because sometimes people don't yes. have access to the internet. They listen to the radio and they, yeah. they like to call. Okay, 971-600-7760. Excellent. I, I know that there's someone out there, semi-retired or retire, retired with the CDL license that would love to help out with this project. And, and uh, you're exactly right. A shower, you know, mm -hmm. looking fresh, being able to go and get a job. It all works hand in hand. Now, Todd, when you think about when I think about this program that you're all setting up, talk to us a little bit about what you what you envision or how long someone would be in your program. Is there a like a, a year process or 18 months? What what is success as far as measuring tools? Success is getting someone back where they're sustainable and they've got housing and they're they're stable. So you know, we want to keep them as long as we can We can work and, and they can be beneficial to the group. But one of the conditions of getting this property is that we have to operate a school. Mm -hmm. We can't just run residence. So we, they would have to ha come in and do a night school and then work during the day or, you know, would have evening class or day classes and they work in the evening depending on what their shift is. So uh, it doesn't have to be an accredited School, from what I understand, with 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 the county, we're just really set on doing something a little different. I have never heard of anybody actually having the homeless be teachers. I love that. As I love well that as, idea. As well as being students. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think we've got some some unique. It's like a training ground, is what it Correct. is, all the way around life skills. 
practical ways to get engaged in community. I love it. You're listening to Reliable News Talk Radio, KSLM, news that you can use on this Thursday and every day. We'll be back after this. What's being done right now is not working. Mm -hmm. It just keeps getting worse. And so we have a vision that we can... Um, educate them, we can empower them. Instead of treating them like a homeless person, treat them like a human being. They're people that are very capable and something happened in their life Mm -hmm. that was unexpected. And so it took a a, a different road that uh, it's, that doesn't mean that's who they are. Our mission statement says to reveal, empower and release each individual's gifts and to provide a safety net for those in crisis so as not to lose their way. I feel like everybody has a gift that the Lord's given them, everybody. And I'd like to put a mirror in front of them so they can see who they really are instead of who society has told them they are or the lies that they've been given by, um, well, Satan himself or uh, people around them. And so I feel like if we educate them, just basic things like... um, we uh, teaching them a trade teaching Mm -hmm. them it's 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 crazy but most people don't know how to balance a checkbook Mm. and so just basic financial management skills cooking skills there's a lot of mental health issues and a lot of addiction issues i believe that those are actually more of a side effect of the real issue and so i really want to get down to the real issue and instead of treating them like they are incapable of Mm -hmm. helping themselves i want to empower them to help themselves and so we can possibly end this chronic homelessness often what i found the difference between a homeless person that i've experienced and you and i Mm -hmm. is that that lack of satisfaction of of seeing that they've accomplished something and that they have a have uh, someone to be accountable to or making their mark on the world they've just kind Mm -hmm. of unplugged for whatever reason and we are not defined we should not be defined by our events that happen in our life we our identity and you and i share this that in in our faith by our creator we are created in his image and we all have a plan and a purpose, right? That's right? And helping them bridge that to understand that. And like you said, you see the mirror and see themselves that they have a purpose. And and it may be, you know, in our mind, it might not be majorly significant, but to them, it could mean the whole difference in the world. And having the skills and the development and that self-esteem is really, really extremely important. What is your yes. website? Our website is Changing the World Inc. Dot org. Good morning. Good morning. It's a good morning. Wake up to a brand new day. Good morning to you. You're listening to Reliable News Talk Radio, KSLM. News that you can use on this Thursday and every day. That you and I, friends, we can make a difference by s- smiling, doing something kind, donating gifts, being that a uh, person that goes in a room and changes the atmosphere and so as an early early teenager throughout my life I've always looked for ways that I can impact lives for good that has been a mission of mine and here I meet Lisa and Todd and they're doing that exact thing right here in the Pacific Northwest and on their Facebook page it's so cool there's a a visual of a stone being dropped into looks like a lake or a pond and the rippling effect with this quote I alone cannot change the world but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples And that was from Mother Teresa. And so, Lisa, when I see this on your website, it just resonates with me because that's my life mission is to, you know, empower people uh, with the truth so that they can impact not only their own life and leave a legacy, but impact other lives for good. And you're doing that. And so I'm so excited to have you in the studio talking about that. And I know we're talking about the campus and we're casting the vision for this community, Todd. Giving people dignity. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and, and showing their value. Empowering them to be the best them they can be. Right. One of the discussions we had early on was, you know, do we want to have it, you know, the grace shelter or, you know, you, mm-hmm. if you're finding a job application, do you want to be from the, you know, the, mm. the, compassion the compassion center. internet, you know, compassion <laughs> yeah. campus? We yeah. said, no, this is mm-hmm. going to be the empowerment campus. Right. And, and that's our vision is to mm-hmm. create an empowerment campus where people can have meaning, mission, shelter, yes. 
but they also can get an education at the same time, at least learn the basic job skills and do what it is that fits their passion and their gift. So many times the, the education system that we have in regular schools throws people out because, I mean, if you have a tree and you have a monkey and an elephant and a lion and you say, okay, you guys must climb the tree to be successful. Mm. Well, only the monkey can climb the tree, right? So mm -hmm. the elephant and the lion are left down there. So for those folks that are left out of society and they aren't able to fire on all cylinders, we want to, you know, learn from them right. and let them teach us as mm -hmm. well as we teach, you know, so it's a give and take. And I don't think anybody in the world is doing that for the homeless. We want to change the world, Inc.org. I love it. I love it. And when you think about the word empowerment, it really is one that is you can't be empowered unless you do something and you do it for yourself then you can do it's like putting the oxygen mask on the airplane they say put the oxygen mask on yourself before assisting others right they have to take care learn to love themselves take care of themselves be empowered then they can make a change well it comes back to it comes back to the fact of you know, if you go up to a homeless person and say, hey, you come with me, I have a shelter for you, they're not going to want to come. Mm. But if you came and you described an empowerment campus where they could put down roots and, and grow and be something, I think you'd have people folding up their tents and knocking down our doors at Changing the World. I agree. I agree. Org. Well, um, and you talk about the training the trainers or them learning to teach and train others. A lot of that, what I found in those that have recovered in addiction, is that they end up being the counselors. They end up, because they can relate. It's about relationship, right? And, and building and making community and making a community people want to belong to something and the best way to learn is to teach that's exactly right it's exactly right right now while we're waiting for this grant and and waiting to to see this come into the natural right we can visual it in the supernatural almost like this vision and dream and how it's going to be until we get the grant and you know that it's game on right there's things that are going on right now in the community how can people get engaged lisa right now with what you're doing to build relationships, uh, get to know the homeless, and, and uh, invite them eventually to the, to the Empowerment Campus. Well, one of the things we're doing right now that we would love more volunteers for and donations is handing out hygiene packs. Mm -hmm. It's a real um, situation when you're homeless to find ways to keep clean. Mm -hmm. So our hygiene packs have things like baby wipes and waterless shampoo, just the basic kind of stuff. Um, any donations that uh, anyone wants to give, both monetarily or just get, you know, um, hygiene products, mm -hmm. um, that would help a lot. And also, we'd love some volunteers. Also, we accept donations of vehicles, real estate, any of that kind of thing. So anything helps. And uh, if enough people donate, we may not even need the grant and we can just move forward to purchase this campus and, and start our empowerment center. That's incredible. Yeah. And when you think about the things we've talked about friends today, someone with a CDL and the time available to help us with the showering. We have the staff. You have helpers to staff the showers, but you need someone to actually drive this vehicle to a place so that the folks can get showers. You, you, you need hygiene volunteers to pass out the packets, plus the stuff to put in the packets, right? Right. And um, certainly donations towards this campus. We're waiting on grants, but you need sustainability beyond the initial grants to purchase and all of that kind of thing. So we can go to the website. Give us the website again. Changingtheworldinc.org. Okay, and the phone number. 971-600-7760. Any, any other message, uh, Todd, that you'd like to share before we wrap up? Well, we just want to thank you guys for listening today, and mm -hmm. may the Lord move on your heart, and if you if he's so touching your heart, to reach out to us at changingtheworld.org. Get a hold of us out here. Say, hey, I heard you on the radio. We want to be a part of this. How can we be involved? Or here's our idea, or here's who we know. Here's how we might be able to, to help. Yep, and I encourage each and every one of us, maybe you as a listener can't do something uh, physical, like be a part or go out and hand out the hygiene packs, but you can certainly spread the good news. We're going to have this as a podcast up on our Facebook page and also on our website at kslm.news. Grab that link, share it on your social media. Let people know that there are ways that you can get engaged and maybe you're involved in your church group, your Bible study. Maybe there's a group 
uh, through you know through your neighborhood association, you're looking for a good cause to get behind. I encourage you to get plugged in. We can make our community better. We do not have to accept the fact that people are living uh, along the bridges and along uh, state property. I think of the Salem is at the Parkway, Portland Road, in that area. There's a bunch of folks living there too. I'm I'm burdened by that, and I know so many of you have have been as well. And there's things that we can do. And here's an organization, Practical Solutions, face to face. We can do these things right now. We'll put this up on our Facebook page, on our website again, kslm.news. You can also send me an email, Stacy S T A C E Y at kslm dot uh, news. Is there an email that they can send you an email as well? Yes, Changing the World Inc. Mail at gmail dot com. Excellent, excellent. We are better together, and I so appreciate your time today you, for being here. And give us an update. When do you think the grant will be? You'll have some kind of idea when the grant will be awarded. The Project Turnkey Grant that's administrated by the Oregon Community Foundation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the money must be spent by June. Okay. And so everything has to be awarded by June. So between now and June, we should right. get some good news. So we'll add our prayers onto that as well. Thank you Thank so you. much. You guys have a wonderful day. You're listening to Reliable News Talk Radio, KSLM. Thank you for tuning in together today, friends. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be talking about suicide and suicide prevention and what we can do in our community to address that need. We'll be back tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. God bless you, and God bless the USA.